are back. The country currently in various phases of reopening, but before you head out, there are safety and first aid tips you should know. Joining us uh, once again, Dr. Mike. Welcome back to the show, Dr. Mike. Good to see your smiling face. What do we need to know before we go out to eat? Let's start there. Well, that, that's a great place to start, Ryan. And what you want to do is call ahead or once you arrive at the restaurant to not be afraid to ask them how they plan to keep you safe. Just how restaurants are obligated to talk to you about food allergies, they have to be talking about the precautions they're taking with COVID-19. If they aren't, that's a good indication that you should probably be moving on. Dr. Mike, here's something I never really think about under ordinary circumstances, but under a pandemic, I think about what if somebody chokes? What are we supposed to do if you're in a restaurant and you see somebody choking? Yeah, so this piece of advice is gonna apply to all types of first aid. I want you to stay alert, not anxious, because when you get anxious, you start making bad decisions. And specifically, when you see someone choking, they're usually reaching for their throat, turning blue, coughing, gagging. Do the Red Cross thing, five and five rule. Five back slaps where you're trying to help them clear the obstruction. And if that doesn't work, you're going to move on to five Heimlich maneuvers, which means pushing in between the navel, the belly button, and the breastbone with your fist tucked in like this, classic Heimlich maneuver five times. And if it fails the first time, repeat it once more. And if it does again, you're going to have the help that you called for already arriving in time. Dr. Mike, there is obviously a, a lot of news about places taking your temperature before you go in, before you get any sort of service or maybe even enjoy a meal. Is that a good indicator? Is that enough? What, what does that tell us? Yeah, so a lot of people want to get out of their home, understandably so. Those who are high risk over the age of 60 have other medical conditions or are immunocompromised, still they should be staying home just to be safe. If you are planning on heading out, do not think that a place that's checking your temperature is foolproof. It is more security blanket than anything because what we've seen is a lot of folks who are not showing symptoms, usually because they're going to in a period of a week or two, so they're actively spreading the virus, but look fine. So temperature checks are not a foolproof method to protect you. I've been reading about public pools opening and water parks opening and things like that. Um, what should we know? Is there a risk to families to go to a water park or a public pool? Are we swimming in masks? What should, what should we know? Yeah, so anytime you're going out uh, to amusement parks, theme parks, there's a high chance that you might get wet. So my simple piece of advice is to bring two face coverings when you go, because the two most important things you should be doing is keeping six feet away from others and covering your face. But if one of these masks gets wet, it becomes largely ineffective. It doesn't protect you from virus as well. It actually becomes difficult to breathe through, and it can actually cause harm to your skin. So bring two masks in case it gets wet and do your best to stay away from others. All right, let's, we got some more tips coming up with Dr. Mike. And by the way, I see that Easter egg on your shirt. We'll DM you. We will DM you in the break. Don't <laughs> worry. We'll be right back with more tips after this. I see it. We're back as the country starts to reopen. Uh, Dr. Mike is here to give us tips on how to protect ourselves, what we need to know. Um, here's a question that everybody wants answers to, Dr. Mike, with um, hair salons and nail salons starting to slowly reopen what should we know? What should we be prepared for? How do we enter? What keeps us safe? Yeah, I mean, uh, nail salons, hair salons are going to be following their local and state regulations, so not everyone's going to be able to go at the same time. Once you do go, make sure you're keeping yourself safe by keeping your face covered. And actually, I know that uh, you guys have your masks with you right now. Maybe you can grab those. Those are those little inexpensive surgical masks. I'm going to teach you something that we learn in medical school very early on, and it's not something we teach ourselves. If you want to sneeze or cough and someone is sitting directly in front of you, like for me, it's usually a patient or someone I'm doing a procedure on, the natural instinct is to turn away when you sneeze. But actually, when you're wearing a mask like this, you have it on like this, it could actually spray out the side and you may actually get your respiratory droplets on the person sitting in front of you. So the proper protocol would be to take a step back or move back and then sneeze directly at that person while still covering your face. The cool kids are calling it dabbing. I don't know, I don't know, do you guys, are you dabbing? Mm -hmm. uh, we of can, course. we can, what do you we can think? dab. There's also, yeah, there's a foot move that goes with that too, but we'll teach you the whole dance <laughs> later, Donna.
Uh, yeah, for sure. So, but uh, it's not interesting that you, you, you have to sneeze and call yeah, forward. Yeah, I wouldn't have like thought of that. Turn away. It's kind of counterintuitive. So, Doctor, in, in, Kelly and I have been talking about we're doing workouts at home. We're taking classes online or doing a FaceTime class. Uh, gyms. A lot of people do want to get back to the gyms, though. What do you suggest we think about when we're back on equipment and treadmills and things like that at the gym? Well, you got to understand right away, first and foremost, that folks are touching all of this equipment. And a lot of people would sneeze on their hands, cover their coughs, then make contact with the equipment. So the virus is on there. What you want to do is have hand sanitizer, disposable wipes at the ready. In fact, I encourage gyms to have this available for their uh, visitors. However, a little tip that I recommend, even though it's getting warm out, is to bring a full glove. Not the gloves that are cut off at the fingertips, but a full glove. And it's not because you don't want the virus getting on your hands. That's not a big deal. You can wash your hands. The virus doesn't just enter through your fingers. It has to make contact with your face. But when you wear a glove like that, even if the virus is on the glove, you're less likely to make contact with your face because the glove is just, it's a good reminder to not touch your face. And if yeah. you don't touch your face, that virus won't enter your body. By the way, Jay, someone not missing like his gym that. appointments, Dr. Mike. Look at the uh, look at the strength coming out of those yes. scrubs, no, Dr. Mike. I'm losing my gains, Ryan. It's really bad. I can't wait to get back to no. the gym. I, Kelly, I understand no, you what you're talking about, Mike. but I do want to work out. For more on this conversation and Dr. Mike's tips, you can go to kellyandryan.com. Our good news story of the day is next. DM, take care. Thanks, man. Stay happy and healthy.